Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress, and today I'm going to explain how refrigeration in general, but on boats, works. I promised you all a video on like boat refrigeration, which is all refrigeration. It's all the same. And air conditioning in theory. It's all the same thing. But this is a big topic. And if I try to jam it all into one video, it would just be a confusing mess. So hopefully this isn't a confusing mess, but today I'm going to talk about the theory of it. This is a prerequisite. You won't understand the rest until you understand the theory. But when the theory is alone, it's really basic and really straightforward. Now, this is the same theory for the refrigeration that keeps my beers cold and my meat frozen as it is for the refrigeration that cools the air over my bed and makes me all comfortable. So if you're interested in either of those, this video is important prerequisite. What's a fridge? Fridge is a box that's cold. Thing is, cold isn't a thing. There's no such thing in physics or nature as coldness. There's just heat or less heat. So let's talk about heat. Now, I'm going to talk about a little teeny bit of physics right now because everything gets easier if you understand this tiny thing. Please don't run away. The rest of it's going to be very practical. What is heat? Temperature. Uh, temperature is a way of measuring heat. Heat is the average vibration of all the things that you're testing. And if you've got a gas, something compressible, and you have a, this much of it, and the, the, the little molecules are all spread out, and they're bouncing around at a certain speed. If I compress them together, they're now in a smaller space, but they didn't lose their heat. It's exactly the same as it was before, but now they're all jammed closer together and they're moving more actively. Let's think of it that way. So the temperature goes up as I compress them. And as I let them expand, the temperature goes down. Refrigeration is all based on that physics and that's all we're not going to do any math. Okay, how does it do it? Okay, it does it by taking a gas, a working gas. Modern, we use 134A, and 134A is a hydrofluorocarbon. We used to use R12 chlorofluorocarbon. Chlorofluorocarbon is really, really nasty to the ozone. Hydrofluorocarbon is a lot less nasty to the ozone. It's not like benign, but it's, it's, it, that's why we're all using it. We're trying to save the planet a bit here can't just get rid of refrigeration. Can you imagine how we'd all be living without refrigeration? We would have food shortages. So it is vital. What we do is we take this working gas and we do things with the gas itself. We compress it, we expand it, we put heat into it, we take heat out of it, and we run it around in a circle. So let's start out with that. We've got a, just a circle. This circle is the flow of the gas. And it goes this way in my drawing. Now, everything above this line, this will be where the gas is high pressure. And below the line is where it's low pressure. Okay, now we got gizmos that can do these changes. Over here, We'll have the compressor. The compressor takes a gas that's at low pressure and compresses it into a high pressure gas. Pretty simple. Now over here is expansion valve. Expansion valve takes the high pressure Lick, uh, gas. It's actually a liquid at this point. We'll get to that in a minute. But the high pressure substance and turns it into a low pressure. And all that is is think about like um, an aerosol can and the spray thing on the top of it. It's high pressure inside, low pressure outside. When you squeeze it, the high pressure becomes low pressure and of course sprays and velocity and, and expands. <coughs> Those two things, well this one thing gets everything moving and this makes the phase change the pressure change back to low pressure. Now, when the working fluid leaves the high pressure condenser and it's at high pressure, it's a high pressure gas. And when it's at high pressure, remember it got hot because we took everything and jammed it together. So now it's really, really pretty hot and it's a 
but it's a gas. So we put in something here called a condenser. Now the condenser, in comes this high pressure gas and it's hot and the condenser gives a way for the heat to leave, for the heat to go shooting out of it and when the heat leaves it, it condenses into um, a liquid. So now we've got a liquid that flows to the expansion valve and the expansion valve lets the pressure go away. Well, when the pressure goes away, it now boils back into a gas. Okay, there's a huge thing with phase change here. Now we've gone from a gas to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. Think about your, an ice cube. If you took an ice cube and put it in a drink, so the ice cube is like 31 degrees Fahrenheit or negative one Celsius and the uh, water could be like positive one Celsius or like 34 degrees Fahrenheit. That ice cube takes a long time to melt uh, and you, longer than you would think for just a couple of degrees of difference. It's because to make the phase change from a solid to a liquid, it has to absorb a huge, ridiculous amount of energy. And it's pulling it out of the energy that's going from your hand into the glass and from the glass into the water of uh, the drink and the drink into the ice cube. Same thing here. When we phase change from a gas to a liquid in the condenser, the condenser just gets rid of huge amounts of heat. And when we phase change into the uh, gas state again with the expansion valve, we've got a very, very cold, ah, it's mostly liquid actually, honestly, at that point, but a, a slurry, but very, very cold and very low pressure. So one last thing is the evaporator. The evaporator is just the opposite of the condenser. It's where the heat can come in. So the heat from your food is going into the condens or the evaporator, gets recompressed. The condenser sends the heat out to something, gets, uh, the pressure gets relieved, goes around and around and around, and now you've got a system that can pump heat. And more importantly, it can pump heat from a cold place to a much warmer place. That's pretty interesting. An ice cube just takes uh, your relatively warm drink and moves the heat into the ice cube. This thing is taking heat that's in your freezer, which is a quite cold place, and getting rid of it in the air or whatever you've got to get rid of the heat into. So that's why we have refrigeration. Now let's look at some of the real components here. Uh, compressor. Well, sorry it's kind of a mess, but I don't want to take it apart for this. This is a sled I took off a boat that was perfectly good, but there was so much wrong with the rest of the system that, uh, well, it got trashed. But I kept this part because, you know, spare compressors, uh, we need them out here. So this is the compressor. Uh, we'll blow, give a blow up of it. It's pump. It pumps a gas, compresses it into higher pressure gas. Uh, this is the control unit for it. These things fail. Let me grab another one. Here's the control unit for it. These things aren't the most reliable and they're real easy to install. They basically plug in electrically. So this is one of the spares you should carry. Uh, I think they're getting better, but uh, still you want to carry a spare and um, this would be one of the spares I'd carry for refrigeration, number one. Okay. Now the condenser. This is the condenser in this one. And you can see it looks like the radiator in the front of your car, but small. This is an air condenser. And there's a fan attached and the fan blows air over it. And that air leaves hotter than it came in and it's taking the heat away out of the system. And the way this is set up is the fan blows across the condenser and then the extra air blows across the compressor because it's electric, it gets hot. For expansion valves, there's two ways that's done. Almost always in boat refrigeration, it's done this way. Simplest thing you could possibly imagine. This is called a capillary tube. And it's just an itty bitty little copper tubing. All the rest of the system is done with copper tubing, but this is teeny tiny itty bitty. And you use a fairly large amount, like all of this would go into one refrigerator. And just because it's such a restricted flow, the liquid going through it gets held back and then on the other side, it can be low pressure without losing all its pressure. Like if you just used a big pipe, the compressor could never make pressure. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is 
an expansion valve. That's what I use in the air conditioner. It's kind of the same thing with like a trained monkey attached. So it watches the temperature in another part of the system I won't go into right now. And when that is within, um, gets too warm, it opens up the valve and lets more gas go. And when it gets too cold, it shuts down the system. So it's, it's like a smart version of this. But this is what you'll be using. If you ever see this in your fridge, and you will, it's usually wrapped around another uh, piece of tubing. Do not kink it. If, if, if you drop something on it and you are able to actually bend it and kink it, you've changed its inside diameter and um, it won't work right anymore. So be very, very, these things are fragile, so be very careful with these. Now the evaporator, um, that's the, the freezer part of your box. You know, that's that usually aluminum uh, white thing in there that gets really cold. And uh, it's, it's just absorbing heat and you know, doing its thing. This is where the heat's absorbed. All the other things here are thermostats. You don't want the system just running all the time. It runs until it's cold enough in your fridge and then it shuts off. And that's usually done either with a, a mechanical one and that's what this is. Most everybody gets these because they're dirt cheap from China right now. They've always been pretty cheap. Uh, but uh, I've been using these with great effect and these aren't terribly expensive. Uh, it's an electronic thermostat. You actually type in the temperature you'd like to go on and when it would turn off and you hook it up. It has to have 12 volts to run, but you've got 12 volts. And uh, anyway, another way to go. It's one last little piece that I can think of right now, and it's this. It's called the filter dryer. And that goes right here. That is a filter because the, the, the liquid going through it, if, you, if it had anything in it, it could get caught. Remember that little cap tube's tiny, so you wanna, don't want to get that plugged up. And it has a desiccant in it. And the desiccant will take any molecules of water and absorb them. It's really important because one of the ways a fridge can fail is if you don't charge it properly and you get some moisture in it, the water will actually freeze inside the tubing and block things off. And uh, you don't want that. So a filter dryer. That's what mine looks like. Um, this is probably more common in marine refrigeration because they're very, very cheap and uh, they work fine. We give ourselves a couple ways of looking inside to get the pressure. So we have these access ports. They're usually placed anywhere above and below this line. It doesn't really matter because all they can really see is pressure. But we have these two access ports and how we use these access ports is we want to look inside the system and know what the low pressure is in pressure and what the high pressure is. And for that we use this set of gauges. These are basic refrigeration gauges and um, we just hook the high pressure one to the high pressure port and the low pressure one to the low pressure port. This last yellow tubing either goes to a vacuum pump and we'll go into that later when we charge the system or it goes to your source of gas and that's how the gas goes into the system. But just from a pressure point of view, once you've hooked these two up, this gauge will read what the high pressure uh, is in your system, and this will read the low pressure. We're interested in how many PSI it is, but we're also interested in what temperature would the fluorocarbon evaporate at, at that pressure. And that's, if you look up all the different refrigerations on this, you'll find 134A, I think it's blue on this one, and you look it up and you see the temperature. Same with this one, you'll see the temperature. And what that gives us is we know that this thing is like 95 degrees is, is where the condensation uh, line is. That means the condenser is doing its phase change when the gas gets down to 95 degrees. Well, if it's an 85 degree a day, there's a fan blowing across, nothing's really efficient, you know? 95 sounds about right, so everything's good. If that says like, um, 140 degrees, you're going, oh, something's wrong with this system. I've got a blockage. I don't know, something. So that's why I use that. On the low pressure side, again, it tells you how cold the actual molecules are that are evaporating in the evaporator. And they're going to be colder than you want your food because, you know, because heat travels downhill. But it gives you a lot of information about failures too. Anyway, this is an important tool of the trade. I've been cruising off and on for about 20 years since I left Seattle, you know, for this being my life over the other old life where I went to work and everything. 
Um, I built my first fridge before I left, used it in the, you know, in the marina for a long time and it worked fine. So I kind of knew what I was doing. You get out there and people realize you know what you're doing and especially when you're way out there, you get asked to look at fridges a lot. So I've seen a bunch of them. Let me talk about how they fail. The most common thing that causes a fridge not to work like you would like it to is the gas pressure. It will stop acting like it acted before, but it'll still work. You know, it just doesn't get quite as cold. And most importantly, you'll see that the frost line on the evaporator is changing. It's, uh, it's, it's receding back to where the gas comes from. That gas got away. Um, it got away through a leak and best thing you can do is find the leak and fix the leak. If it's getting away really fast, there's no question. You got to fix the leak. But if it's just leaking ever so slowly and uh, a lot of these uh, marine refrigeration systems that are pre-charged, their little connectors leak. So tighten them up a little bit more, give it some gas and, and see how it does. Uh, putting the gas in the system is something you could do with relatively inexpensive parts. Uh, if not, you can find someone around that probably has like invested in the gauge set and some gas. And you can always go to a local refrigeration guy if you can get them to come out to your boat. But that's number one. If you start seeing the frost line move, check the, the pressure. Along with the pressure, if you get a guy that knows what he's doing to come in and adjust the pressure, you can actually improve the efficiency a fair amount. The pre-charge systems are more or less right. You know, they put a little too much gas, figure you're going to lose a little bit of gas, but they have to guess. Where if after the fact you actually test the gas and adjust it, you can get it, you know, like spot on. Next most common failure is probably the thermostat. The thermostat's a real simple little device. Yours probably looks like this, more or less. Um, this tubing actually has some of the same uh, fluorocarbon in it. And you put it by the evaporator. And when the evaporator gets cold enough, it freezes that gas into a liquid and that moves a little diaphragm and shuts off a switch. It's all a thermostat is, is an adjustable switch. If you take these two wires off and connect them together and the system just starts running, it's your thermostat. So that can be replaced and you can carry spares. Uh, these aren't terribly expensive. There's also electronic ones. Uh, these are kind of nice because they actually tell you what the temperature in your box is and you can really adjust them when it comes on, when it comes off, everything. On the downside, you need to mount it differently because you'd want this out where you can see it and you have to hook it up to 12 volt power. But you know, we got 12 volt power. Uh, seeing the temperature is actually pretty useful. Uh, <laughs> I did a fridge job for a good friend of mine who's a uh, retired military pilot. And, you know, he lived in a world of gauges and dials and everything. Anyway, we mounted this outside the fridge. And I, I, knowing Ed, I said, where do you usually lay to read a book and just hang out? Oh, here. So I, I turned it sideways. So it didn't actually face the galley. It faced his position. He got so much joy watching the fridge go on and off and seeing the specific temperature and knowing it was working. We realized this is a guy that his fridge was failing a lot. You know, his beer wasn't cold. And he wouldn't know it was failing unless he opened it up and let heat in to see if it was cold. And now he's got a gauge. Anyway, having a gauge is quite nice. It saves you power because you don't have to check on it. And you know when it's working. Fans. Fans are real simple. Um, you'll know they're not working when they don't go round and round. <laughs> but before they stop going around and around, they start sounding like hell. Um, you, you don't want that. That means it's on its way out. The bearings are going most likely. If it does sound like hell, you might want to check just to make sure like a little piece of wire isn't touching the blade, nothing's touching the blade, because that's an easy fix. But when they start going bad, you have no choice. You just have to replace them. Carry a spare. They're not terribly expensive. They're good fans for other uses. You know, you can blow air on yourself with them. They're, they're, they make it more comfortable. But make sure you get a fan that either draws less than one amp or in about a one third amp fan is a good 12 volt fan to have. Or if you get one that draws more than an amp because you've decided for whatever reason you're in a tight cabinet or you just need to push the air harder, uh, you need to use a relay because the control unit can only switch one amp. If you try to put too big a fan on it, it will turn itself off to protect itself. <coughs> that brings us to the control unit. Now, control units are getting better. 
but they're not they're electronic and electronic stuff fails if you can keep it cool that's good these older ones have cooling fins on them uh, so the newer ones you see don't anymore and I'm assuming that's not because they got cheap but because they used better MOSFET best better transistors we have better ones available now that just have lower resistance and don't make so much heat so I'd actually trust this one more than that one but keep them cool if you have an older one carry a spare they're not cheap but they fail a lot and the other reason to carry a spare is there's really no way to test these things really I mean you could have an educated guess you need one and then you'd, you'd order one and uh uh, ordering parts out here is difficult and remember your food is melting all the time while you're waiting for the thing to come in it might be a month so if you have a spare you just unplug you take take a picture so I always tell everybody a cell phone is the greatest piece to use when you do mechanical work take a picture before you touch it uh, and then when you get done you say oh the red wire went here and the blue wire went here and blah 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 uh, or label the wires they have labels on the side here uh, just put those letters on the wires with a little piece of tape but anyway unplug it all uh, there's one screw here you take that off and then it just un comes right off the compressor there's this thing here and you'll see how that unplugs from the compressor plug the new one on put it back in hook it up if it works throw away the old one that was the problem if it doesn't work well then you gotta look a little deeper but having a spare one of these is great most of the time those fixes will keep your fridge running and it's a pretty short you know number of spare parts to carry some days you've got a bigger problem and you're going to need somebody that has a vacuum pump for example or somebody that just knows a bit more about it because it gets into voodoo territory pretty fast after those fixes it gets to the point where you've got to imagine what's happening like if you get a blockage in the system um I can find them but I can't tell you how I find them I just do uh it, it's it's just a little weird in there it's a world where you can know the pressure in certain places and technically you can know the temperature in places either by putting a therm thermometer on it and touching it but you kind of can't know both and knowing the pressure kind of tells you the temperature and knowing the temperature kind of tells you the pressure anyway just it can get weird but remember this system you have on your boat worked yesterday so you're not re-engineering it you're just going to replace the bits that aren't working anymore and uh, you should have a good working system hope that was of interest it should be you should know how your boat works we don't live in a marina world out here so we need to know how our boats work it gives you the basis you need to understand refrigeration but particularly if you're one of those guys that wants to put one of my air conditioners in you really have to understand this because you're going to be putting your own air conditioner together and you have to understand this base of it I will be doing that video it is definitely on the list so many other things come up but I apologize it's coming if you don't know about it I built an air conditioner on temptress it only air conditions the cabin we sleep in but it does it for a surprisingly small amount of electricity we uh, run it off batteries and solar panels we never run a generator and it is a game changer we're going down to Panama next year as soon as we can travel again and I've been down there it is hot you just sweat a puddle in your bed every night with the fans on high this is going to change everything we have enjoyed our sleep during the summer here in the tropics so much more and I highly recommend that you uh, think about putting one in if you're going traveling I uh, appreciate you watching all the normal stuff if you'll hit that like button if you're still here by now hey I deserve a like right uh, subscribe if you haven't then you'll get the other videos when they come out and uh, share it with your friends if someone's interested in refrigeration I realize there's probably like 12 of you at this point because this is pretty dry but I think it's important if you really liked uh, what I've done for you here buy me a beer over on patreon man bye <laughs>